Hey guys, thank you for visiting my channel, Medical Assistant with Ms. K. I'm Kendra, I'm a Medical Assistant Instructor, and today I'm going to be doing a video that has been highly requested on dosage calculations. Now, let me just say this. I don't like math. I would say maybe 90% of the students that I've had over the years, they all say they don't like math, so I get it. So because I'm not a math person, I had to make things as simple as possible, right? I teach people the way that I learn. So the way that I'm going to explain it today is the way that was explained to me back when I was learning. And so I hope that it's helpful to you, to you all as well, because I know for some people, you can explain it and explain it and explain it and they just don't get it. So I'm hoping that this video is going to be simple for you, but I'm going to be using what I feel is the easiest method. And that's going to be the D over H times Q method. Okay. So first of all, we're going to start with adult calculations and then we'll do pediatric calculations later because you have to first know adult calculations before you can even do the pediatric calculations. The one thing you want to do, you want to become familiar with the metric table. So the metric table is going to be your foundation because when you have to do certain conversions, like you'll see that we'll need to do, it's going to bring you back to the metric table. Now, there's more to know on the metric table than this, but this is usually where I start with my students because these are just the things that we're gonna to have to know for the basic calculations, okay? Now there's more, which I'll do another video on later. But for right now, we're just gonna focus on micrograms and milliliters right now. So um, as you all know, micrograms are smaller than, than milligrams, right? Milligrams are smaller than grams, right? Milliliters, you guys should know, are smaller than liters, right? So whenever you have to convert, convert from smaller to larger, meaning if you have to convert micrograms to milligrams or milliliters to liters or milligrams to grams, you want to divide that number by 1,000, okay? And I'll include a picture somewhere here of the metric table. Um, but when you're, and then when you're going from larger to smaller, you want to multiply that number by 1,000. As long as you have that foundation of knowing this formula, you want to be good to go. Same thing with kilograms and pounds, right? So we know that in one kilogram, there are 2.2 pounds. So when it comes to converting kilograms to pounds, you're gonna multiply that number by 2.2. When it comes to converting pounds to kilograms, you're gonna divide that number by 2.2. Again, once you know the formula, all you're doing is plugging in the number. So if you get a problem that says the patient is, you know, 25 pounds, how many kilograms is that? You know you're gonna take that 25 pounds and divided by 2.2, right? Simple, all right? So this is where we're gonna start. Again, there's more, but we're gonna start there. All right, so these are some problems that I was doing with my students. So we're gonna kind of work through these, right? So that method that I mentioned, the D over H times Q method, uh, this is better, so I'm gonna write it here. So we got D over H times Q. Now, what is this saying for? The D is your desired dose. So that's what the doctor wants. So in this case, the doctor ordered 1,500 milligrams of a medication. Now the H is for on hand. How much do we have on hand? Meaning when the doctor orders this medication and you know you go to your medicine cabinet or maybe if you have to go to a pharmacist, this is what is on the bottle, okay? So this is what they desire, this is what we have on hand, okay? So I'll just put, um, on hand, right? So we know this is on hand, right? On hand. That's what we have on hand times Q is for quantity, okay? Now, this is going to really matter when it comes to when we are um, trying to see how many milliliters we're going to give to a patient. Now, for me and the way that I teach my students, again, I have to make it as simple as possible. So, you know, I always want to give a disclaimer that this is the way that I teach my students. So if you're in school, and your instructor is showing you a different way, by all means, follow that way. So to make things simple, starting out for me, I just have my students not to worry about this just yet, that quantity. Now, of course you wanna write it down because that is the formula, D over H times quantity. But starting out, we're not gonna worry so much about that because I just feel like starting out when you're fresh and especially if math is not your thing, it can be confusing. But as we go through this problem, it's, it's gonna make more sense to you. So let's go. So we got desired over H, right? D over H times the quantity. Now, if you want to keep it just very simple for right now, let's just focus on the D over H, okay? So in this first problem, the provider ordered 1,500 milligrams of a medication. When I went to the cabinet, I saw 500 milligrams at this, right? 
So we're going to go 1500 because we said it's desired. This is how much the doctor wants, right? And then we're going to go 500. It's simple. What the doctor wants divided by what you have on hand. Now, one simple way that I usually uh, tell my students, because when you look at 500 into 1500, um, when you have bigger numbers, it could be it could be a little bit more difficult to just know it right offhand. One thing you can do, and this is something we learned back in school. I remember to cancel out the zeros. So instead of having to divide 1500 by 500, which is a bigger number, you can simply just look at it, cancel out the zeros, and then just simply um, divide 15 by 5, which is 3. And then this also can cancel out too. So. 5 divided into 15 is going to give us 3. So in this case, we're going to give our patient 3 tablets or 3 capsules, however they come, right? So again, 1,500 is what the doctor ordered, 500 is what we have. So simply, we're going to divide desired dose by what we have on hand. Now, when that quantity comes into play, and this is why I usually add this later, because I just really want my students to get this part first, times quantity. Now, because each tablet is 500 milligrams, this, that's automatically going to be one, because every tablet is 500 milligrams, okay? So there's no need to multiply, because we know if it's one, anything times one is going to be that same number, right? So that's why I don't really, you know, um, focus on that part of the equation until we get to a problem in which we have to convert to milliliters, which you'll see in a few moments, okay? All right, so I'm gonna erase this. So let's look at this next problem here. So in this case, the doctor ordered 500 milligrams of a medication, and then I go to the cabinet and I see that they come in 250 milligrams, right? How many, how much am I gonna to give to that patient? Okay, oh, actually, let's do it the other way. Okay, so the reason why I turn it around because I want to point out something important when it comes to um, to solid medications, okay? So 250 milligrams, that's what the doctor wants, so that's our desired dose, right? And then divided by 500, right? So again, one thing we can do, cancel that out, right? And so now we're dividing 25 by 50, which is going to give us a half. Now, the reason why I wanted to go ahead and do the 250 divided by the 500 versus 500 divided by 250, which would have given us two, um, I wanted to do the half because I wanted to point out something. So in any instance that you have to give half of a medication, half of a tablet, you want to make sure it's a scored tablet. So some people I know at home, many of you probably can relate when you were growing up, Maybe your parents was giving you, you know, a pill and they didn't want to give you the whole pill so they cut it in half. The problem with cutting a tablet in half is that when you cut it in half, if it's not scored, it's not evenly distributed throughout that tablet. So if you cut it in half, let's just say the pill, let's just say 200 milligram tablet, right? Um, when it's scored, there's 100 milligrams on both sides of that tablet. But if you just take a random pill that's not scored and you cut it in half, it could be maybe, you know, 75% um, of the medication on one side and then 25% on the other side. You're not getting it in, in, in even um, amount, right? So that's why it's so important to make sure if you're cutting tablets in half, it needs to be a scored tablet. And so that's why I wanted to point that out, okay? All right, so let's go to the next one. Now, the doctor in this case ordered 3.6 grams of a medication, and then what we have on hand is 1,200 milligrams. Now, in this case, this, this unit of measurement is not the same as this. Anytime this happens, if the doctor orders grams and what you have on hand is milligrams, you have to first convert that. This is when this is gonna come into play, right? So in order to convert this grams, right, to milligrams, what are we gonna have to do, right? 
grams are bigger than milligrams. So that means when we're going from larger to smaller, we have to multiply by 1,000, right? So we're going to have to multiply this 3.6 by 1,000, right? And that's going to give us what? 3,600. 3,600 mg, right? Divided by what we have on hand, and that's gonna be 1200, right? Excuse my handwriting. We're gonna cancel that out, right? The milligrams, we're gonna cancel this out, we're gonna cancel that out. Now all we're doing is, is dividing 12 into 36, which is gonna give us what? Three. So in this case, the patient is gonna get three tabs, right? Now again, if the provider orders a unit of measurement that you don't have, you have to first convert it. This is why it's gonna take us back to this. Now you probably see why you need to know this as a foundation, right? All right, so three tabs. So now let's look at this last one. The doctor's ordering 750 micrograms of a medication, and what we have is 0.25 milligrams, all right? Now, again, two different measurements, right? So we gotta convert. Now, in this case, micrograms are smaller than milligrams, so instead of multiplying by 1,000, we're going from smaller to larger, we're gonna have to divide by 1,000. So it's gonna be divided by 1,000, okay? So this is gonna give us what, 0.75? Right, so now we have 0.75 over 0.25, right? Or 0.25, and that's gonna give us three tablets. Once we divide 0.75 by 0.25, that's gonna give us three tablets. Now let's look at an example of when the medication that we have on hand is actually a liquid, and we need to figure out how many milliliters we need to administer to the patient. So as you guys notice, each of these problems that I went over, the medication that we had in hand was solids, right? The doctor ordered solids, we had solids, it worked out, right? But what happens if a doctor, if a provider orders a certain medication in milligrams, but we have it in liquid form, right? How do we know how many milliliters to give to that patient? We wanna look at that now. So let's say the provider ordered um, 500 milligrams of a medication, right? Okay, again, that's D. And then we go look for the medication and it's in a liquid form and it's 250 milligrams per five milliliters. What this means is that for every five milliliters of that liquid medication, there are 250 milligrams, okay? So this is why I usually wait to introduce that Q part of the equation, because in all of those instances, all the, the quantity was just one, right? 1,200 milligrams was in that one tab, the 500, so on and so forth, were in that one, they were all in that one um, tablet. In this case, for every five milliliters, there are 250 milligrams in that medication. In this case, our quantity is not one. Our quantity is five milliliters. Now. Sometimes it may be per two milliliters, per three, whatever it is, that's gonna be your quantity, okay? So in this case, we still wanna do, you know, like we always do, we're gonna do the, you know, and then that. So let's plug those numbers in. So we got the D over H times Q, we got the 500 milligrams over 250 milligrams times the quantity is five mLs. Again, once you know your formulas, all you're doing is plugging in the numbers, okay? So we got a desired over on hand times the quantity, okay? So now again, mm, that's gonna be two. So now that that's two, now it is gonna simply be two times five mL, which is gonna give us what? 10 mL. And that's how much of the liquid medication that we're going to give to that patient, all right? Now, anytime you do those calculations, you can always just double check your answers, right? You can always say, okay, 
if I got 10 milliliters and that doctor ordered 500 milligrams, is it true that if I give that patient 10 milliliters of a medication, that that's going to be equal to what he wants? Yeah, because for every five milliliters, there are 250 milligrams of that medication. So I hope this helped. Uh, the next video I'll do is on pediatric medications. Now, it's simply all of this. You got to know this before you go into pediatric doses because it's going to all come back to this. But with pediatric dosages, there's just a few more extra steps, okay? First being converting their weight to kilograms if it's not already in kilograms, okay? So I hope that this video was helpful. Let me know down below if this was helpful. Um, I will be doing another video. I'm going to do the pediatric dose video, but I'm also going to do another video that's going to just show a little bit more formulas that you guys are going to have to know when it comes to just being a medical assistant in general and then when it comes to taking your certification exams, and I mean any of the certifications, whether it's CMA, CCMA, or RMA, it's going to be foundational things that you're going to have to know, okay? So let me know if the video was helpful. If you guys are not already in my medical assistant group on Facebook, it's called the Medical Assistant Lounge. Also, I do have medical assistant t-shirts on my website, www.shopwithmizk.com. I'll link it below and I'll probably put it on the screen, but it's shop, M -I -Z -Z, shopwithmizzk.com. Hope that this was helpful. Be blessed.